All right, today we're going to do some volumes. This is our review. We're going to find volumes of prisms, cylinders, pyramids, cones, spheres, and composite figures. So all those things you see on your screen, we are going to find volumes for. Let's start, though, with a little sorting activity. So your job right now is to look at the shapes at the bottom and put them into the categories underneath which formula you think you would use to calculate the volume. So pause the video and um, see if you can figure that out. So if you're back, hopefully you would recognize that this right here, this one is a trapezoidal prism and we would just take the area of the base and multiply that by the height. So that one's going in here. This is a cone. And so it's gonna be one third of the area of the base times the height. This guy over here is a cylinder. It is basically a prism. It's a special fancy kind of prism. So you take the area of the base, which is a circle, multiply by the height. Um, this lovely one is a sphere. It's going to be all alone over here because we do four thirds pi times the radius cubed. Um, I'm going to skip this one for a second. This is another prism. Prisms galore here. We have two congruent parallel bases. We find the area of one of those and then multiply by the height. And this lovely shape is our pyramid. It's a square pyramid. And again, we would take the area of that square base multiply by the height, and then we would divide by three or multiply by a third. This one right here is a little confusing because it's kind of, or I'm going to put it right here. The bottom part, this is a composite figure. The bottom part is a cone. And so just like this, we'd use that one third base times height. The top is a hemisphere. So I would kind of use this formula, only I'd need to cut it in half. So hopefully you did pretty well and just so you know, here's those three formulas again. On the MCA sheet, formula sheet, formula for cylinders and prisms, those were the shapes that we put in that category. Volume is the area of the base. CB is the area of the base. Not the length, not the width, but the whole area of the base times the height. Um, cones and pyramids, we're taking that base times height and multiplying by a third or dividing by three. If you watched the video yesterday, we could see that you could do three of those little cone shapes with the same height and base and put it in the cylinder. And then finally, here's our spheres at the bottom. Okay, I like sorting a lot. So let's do another pause. Look at the video when I'm done. Pause and sort our units. So hopefully you're back. Meters cubed. Anytime we have cubic units, that's going to be a volume. Kilometers squared is going to be an area. Centimeters squared is an area. Length is just centimeters. Feet cubed is going to be a volume. Inches is another way we measure length. Feet will measure length. Centimeters cubed. So these are all the kinds of answers you'll be giving on the test will be the volume ones over here. Yards, if you like football, yards are important. Square miles, sometimes they write out the word, and then cubic centimeters, right? Because here we are doing lengths. It is one dimension. Here we're measuring how many little square units would fill up that 2D shape. And then over here, we want cubes because we have length and width and height. We're trying to figure out how many little cubes fill our shape. So let's get started doing that now that we've spent a little time warming up. All right. So this shape right here, I want to find the volume. This is one of our prisms. I know it's prism because it has, this is a trapezoidal prism, but you can see that this base right here is parallel to and exactly the same size as the base in the back. That's what makes it a prism. So this is the shape I need to find the area of, right? This bottom side, is not the same size as the top side. So even though they're parallel, they're not congruent. Those can't be the bases. And this side is not the same size as that side over there. And they're also not parallel to each other. So our parallel congruent sides are here and here. So we need to find the area of this trapezoid. Now, if you remember your trapezoid formula, you take base one, 
and add it to base 2, which is the top. We're going to divide that by 2, and then we're going to multiply by the height. We are lucky in our trapezoid. We don't have to find anything. They gave us the height right there. We know because of that right angle. So this is the area of the base. So remember, we're doing volume is the area of the base times the height. We just found the area of the base. Boom. What I have to do now is take that and multiply it by the height. Now, this looks like a height. It's what we would normally think of as height. But in this case, the height is the distance between those parallel bases. So that is going to be this 6.3. Now, you should be able to calculate all of this. You can do some of it in your head, or you can use a calculator. I'm going to use my handy Desmo Scientific Calculator, which does so many things. And again, if you're playing along at home, I'm a big fan of you doing. Math is not a spectator sport. So you should do it. I'm going to type in my 8 plus 5. That's base 1 plus base 2. I'm going to divide that by 2. I'm going to move over. I multiply that by the height, which in this case was 5. And then that's just for my trapezoid. And then we're going to multiply that by the height of the prism, which was a 6.3. And right there is my answer, 204.75. All right, so that's my answer, 204.75. Units, units, units. Again, we did units times units times units, centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. We will have centimeters cubed. Because remember, these were centimeters times more centimeters and times more centimeters. There's our centimeters cubed. All right, let's try the next one. So again, we have a prism. This one is a hexagonal prism. So we have a little hexagon, right? You can see, hopefully, you can see your base is right here. Zoop, 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 zoop. I like my sound effects. Ooh, I kind of went off. I was doing good. Well, see, I stopped making sound effects and I lost it. But those are my parallel congruent. Now, we do have other parallel and congruent, but then it's not the same all the way across. So these are our parallel congruent sides. I need to find the area of that base. When we are trying to find the area of a regular polygon, we need that apothem, which is the distance from the center to the middle of the side, right? And luckily, since we know the whole thing is 3.5 tall, this will be 1.75. That's going to be our apothem. That is a really bad picture. All right, there, I cleaned that up just a little bit. So to find the area of the base, right, there's a whole formula. I just think about triangles right here. So I know that this is made up of six triangles. The area of each triangle is the base times the height, which is basically the side length times the apothem. I'm going to divide by two. And then there are six of those, so I'm going to multiply by six. That's the area of the base. And again, for a prism, we're doing the area of the base times the height. Now, in this case, again, this is not the height. It's the height of the whole base. But it's not the height of the prism. The height of the prism is this sneaky 11.5. Because that's how far it is from base to base. So I'm going to go to my trusty calculator. And I'm going to do some calculating. You should do that at home on your own. All right, here we go. We are calculating. We are doing 2. I'm going to put parentheses because I'm doing 2 times... 1.75 divide by 2. That's the area of one of those triangles. There are six triangles that make up the whole hexagon. And then I multiply that by the height of my prism, which is 11.5. And I get 120.75. So that's my area or my volume, 120. 0.75 and again centimeters times centimeters times centimeters cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed Alrighty, so far so good hopefully oh no picture words all right so we got to try and figure this out um 
the base of a cylinder has a circumference of 8 pi inches. When I get a problem like this, I always try and figure out what I know. So I know my circumference is 8 pi. Oh, all right. The volume is 48 pi inches cubed. So I know the total volume, but I don't know the height. And I don't know the radius. i got to figure out so many things. All right, so I know I'm going to use this volume is the area of the base times the height. And in this case, the area of the base is pi r squared. And then we're going to multiply by the height. So I need to find r and I need to find h. And they told me the volume and they told me the circumference. Well, I know this circumference. This is pi times my diameter, which means in this case, my diameter must be... 8. And if my diameter is 8, if it's 8 all the way across, half of that is my radius, which is going to be 4. Look at that. I've made progress. Okay. Height. I need the height. That's what I want. So I'm going to go back to my formula, this formula right here, which says volume is pi r squared h. And a lot of solving for missing pieces is saying, what do I know? What can I put in my equation? And then I solve for what's missing. So what I know, I know the volume. So I can replace V with 48 pi. I have pi. I just figured out my radius, which is 4. And there's my height. All right, so if we clean this up a little get bit, 48 pi is, usually we like to put that number in front, 16 pi times H. To get h alone, I want to undo what is happening to h. It is being multiplied by 16 pi. So let's undo by dividing by 16 pi. If I do one side, I have to do the other side. Pi divided by pi is a big fat 1. And 48 divided by 16, you can do on your calculator or in your head. If you do, you will get 3 is the height. Again, what are my units? Height is a one-dimensional thing. I'm only going one way, so my height is actually three inches in this case because everything else was in inches. All right. Tricky, but not too tricky. Okay. So now we're kind of moving from our volumes of area of the base times the height, and we're going to do area of the base times the height, and then divide by three because this is now a pyramid. So our main formula we still do our area of our base times our height, but then we're going to divide by 3. Or if you like fractions, you can do a, half, a third of your base times your height. Either way. So I need the area of the base, and the base is a pentagon. Regular pentagon. It said regular. That is an important fact. We shouldn't just assume. Okay. So again, I'm thinking of the area of the bottom, which is basically five triangles. And what I know about each of those triangles is that is five, and this part is 5.5. So to find the area of one of those triangles, base times height of the triangle, divide by two, there are five of those triangles. Right, if I split this up, I'm going to get five triangles, one off of each of these lovely sides. And then I'm going to multiply by my height of my pyramid. And the height is this 11. So we're going to multiply all of this times 11. And then we're going to divide this answer by 3, or we can multiply by 1 third. So let's try that. All right, here we go. I'm going to clear what I just did, and I'm going to type in, I have 5 times 5.5. I'm going to divide all of that by 2. It doesn't matter if I divide the 1 or all of it by 2. It'll still work. I'm going to take that answer. There were That's one triangle of the base. So I'm going to, there are five triangles in the base. So now I have the area of the base. I multiply by my 11. And then I'm going to take that answer, and I'm going to divide by 3. And I get 252.08. So there's my answer, 252.08. Okay. 
And in this case, again, it's centimeters, centimeters, and centimeters, so it's centimeters. All right, so I think we're going to tackle, I think I'm going to pause the video or shut the video down, and I'm going to do another one on just the composite figures. So look for that one.